Okay. Guys, please take your seats if possible. The guy is on my left. Can you please take your seats? Okay, good morning everybody. We are starting here the session of contributed talks on regenerative medicine. My name is Dr. Tzahi Shokovic, I'm an Israeli dermatologist. And with me is Dr. Ksania Sofra. There's been a slight change in the chairmans. And since Dr. Ksania Sofra is also the first speaker, I'll invite her to the stage to talk about something which for me sounds very interesting. Why Nobel winning studies focus on molecular mechanisms? Please, Dr. Sofra. Thank you very much for inviting me and for the wonderful presentation. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about why Nobel, why does it Nobel uh, winning prize uh, focus on molecular mechanisms? And the reason why is because the smaller the mechanism, the easier and faster the repair. There, and also time reversal, going back from part to the whole and back is routinely adopted for molecular mechanisms. So the physicists uh, have now managed to reverse time at a quantum computer at a, at a very small scale. But what you need to understand is like a broken cup cannot go back to being uh, the way it was before. It's always gonna remain broken. However, uh, th molecular mechanisms like ATP or GTP, they go from AMP to ATP to ATP, they, they, and back and forth, and they are exactly whole in all of their formats. And this is in basically in accordance with what Einstein said. Einstein said that time, uh, there is a space-time fabric that goes both ways. However, we can only go one way, we can only go forward, we go from past to future. And why is that? Why is it that we can now go back in time? And the reason is because with increasing complexity, as we become a whole person, and the, the, basically the parts merge in what we call a gestalt, which is more than the sum of the parts, and it's different than the sum of the parts. So we can all go back in time because if we scan ourselves back in time, we would never be the same again. We would never be composed into this whole that is more than the sum of its parts. <coughs> also, there is different rules for the old and the young. For example, inflammation is one thing. It's good for the young and deleterious to the old. And there is new theories now. It says uh, there are certain like, scholastic theories have to do with just repair and regeneration. But there is other theories it's called semi-programmed theories that they talk about how earlier mechanisms, when they continue, they become counterproductive for us. So the brightest flame casts the darkest shadow. Now, the first Nobel Prize was in, um, uh, that I will be talking about is the 2015 in uh, chemistry. And although a broken cup cannot go back to its prior form. However, proteins can routinely repair DNA to, be, to make it whole. And DNA repair can happen in two ways, repair and excision. Like we said previously, that certain things have to be subtracted. So thymine dimers inhibit DNA synthesis. So now you have the nucleic uh, excision of the NER pathway, NER pathway, and uh, basically this is a sequence of how um, Sankar, since 1983, uh, used the different proteins to kind of map this pathway. So we have the basic excision repair, which is called BEAR, and the mismatch repair, which basically you repair the DNA, the part. Again, repair happens at the smaller units and before the entire DNA entity is replicated. So what is the significance of repair in the DNA? Well, re DNA creates proteins, and the proteins are basically the alive part of an organism. It's what communicates with uh, uh, the cell, how the cells communicate with each other and with themselves. So basically, if the DNA is damaged, the entire protein 
production is going to be faulty and it's going to be nonsense and that all the signaling pathways are going to be compromised. So we know for a very long time, and it's a Nobel Prize in 1999, that the proteins have intrinsic signals that control the entire network of cellular communications. And that's the signal hypothesis. And how they do that is basically they transport signals. And these signals arrive uh, the way the post has zip codes. Uh, it, they, they are sort of programmed to arrive to the correct part and offer the signal for a optimum uh, uh, production of other proteins or optimum function. And this is a protein sequence. Usually it's at the end that uh, uh, signal of that is delivered uh, to other cells, uh, just the human insulin and uh, all the letters that are involved there. Now, in uh, Nobel research, uh, ex that was extended in 2013. There was a release of uh, neurotransmitters and export of hormones to cell surfaces and communication within cells. And that was like a cargo, like the post delivers uh, uh, packages with food and medicine to different sites of action. Uh, Setman identified a set of genes that are critical for this process. Rothman identified the proteins that are critical for how the proteins bind in specific combinations to deliver the molecular cargo to the right destination. And Sudov identified the molecular machinery that senses, and you see how you know that protein delivers the cargo <coughs> via um, the, the nutrition and the signals into the appropriate uh, cell structure. Now, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry 2015, now remember in uh, 2015 that they said just that certain mechanisms have to be eliminated for optimal function. So you have the base excision and the nucleotide excision. Now, this was extended in 2018. There was another Nobel Prize for eliminating the T cell breaks. And basically, there is two T-cell break, uh, two breaks that uh, have been identified, the CTLA-4 uh, break, the uh, T-cell break, and basically that's, that blocks the uh, uh, T-cell uh, to, uh, 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 to uh, stops it from acting. Now, when you block the break, when you block the TCLA break, then the, the T-cell can attack the tumor cell in cancer and uh, basically uh, kill it. The PD-1 is also another break, and uh, uh, basically if you uh, inhibit that break, then again you can release the uh, uh, T-cells to attack the cancer cells, and uh, there has been uh, a lot of successful treatments of many different cancers, uh, lung cancer, renal cancer, mel uh, melanoma, and lymphoma, uh, with this uh, technology. The activation of T cells, and this is how it's uh, presented, it basically requires two, th two things. It requires a binding in a receptor that recognizes a non-cell, and also there is a proteining that is an accelerator. <coughs> now, these two have to remain as is. However, you have to stop the TCLA break, and when you stop that, then the uh, T cells will attack the cancer cells. Uh, PD-1, same, uh, the exact same thing. Basically, um, again, when you... Minutes, please. Okay. Um, now, another Nobel Prize was, had to do with um, uh, the timing component. That's a very, very important component. And these investigators, they looked at the period gene and the pair protein, and they looked how these two proteins are combined and to kind of... Uh, 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 produce the uh, effect of molecular circadian clocks. So there are, the importance of molecular circadian clocks is as you can see here, uh, keloid scars are affected by uh, these clocks, these uh, gene clocks. And also uh, this disturbance in gene clocks is involved, this stretch marks. Also impsoriasis, you can see before and after and how when you're adjusting these clocks, how it's been uh, uh, suggested. Now there is other, uh, they're also uh, involved in circadian disruption cancer risk. 
uh, circadian disruption accelerates tumor growth and many other functions. So you have signaling process with respect to time to deliver the necessary cargo with instructions to repair and regeneration. There is another aspect of it. The natural DNA produces nonsense proteins, and this happens during heat, like with radio frequency, for example. Also, the natural proteins deliver this nonsense signals, and the entire network collapses. Now, and there is a lot of disorders as a result of misfolded proteins. Now, the uh, research has gotten a step further. So can we unboil a net? Can we basically re refold unfolded uh, proteins? And the answer is yes, and there is actual a measurement that uh, the negative virial coefficient, this SED measurement, a negative one indicates that the protein aggregation increased, that means the protein is destroyed, is denatured, and the positive that uh, the uh, protein has a positive result, therefore it decreases, so the protein is gonna be more functional. So there is an actual way of measuring this, and this is a video I can, sh I can show you how this can happen. So corrective signals can <coughs> amplify faded biological signals. They all they can fill in gaps in biological signals. As they fill in the gaps, the signals become functional again. And basically, they restore the intra and inter communications between cells. They restore the signaling pathways. And basically, communications between cells is equal to health. And with this, I will conclude my lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sopra. And from the basic science part, we'll move swiftly to Dr. Pace Wang.